morning, everyone. Hey, I uh, want to uh, quote Lamentation 3.23, that God mercy never ends, God compassion never fail, it is always new every morning. Amen. I know that we have been in a difficult situation, difficult time. Everybody uh, got affected, but it's always good to be reminded with that Lamentation 3.23 that God's mercy never ends, God compassion never fails, and they are always new every morning. Amen. And also, I would like to uh, give my appreciation. I want to thank you so much for all of you here, the worship and art ministry, the, the live stream media. Man, you guys are awesome. You know, if I'm at home, it's very convenient, very easy for me, you know, get up and then grab my phone, go to YouTube, and then click the link, watch with my coffee and everything. So easy, so convenient. But I know behind the screen, it's always a, a big preparation, you know, especially when, when there's a technical difficulties, right? I think you guys are, are, are awesome. But you just made it very, very uh, smooth and easy for us. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm so blessed, my, my family and personally me, so blessed. And I believe everybody also is blessed. Okay, so before uh, I start my, my sermon, I, I wanted to do something different. Today, uh, I want to uh, ask uh, Nicole to help me. Firstly, uh, I want to start with a, with a short uh, conversation, okay? So, conversation between, between two persons, okay? So, this is, I, I found it from, from internet, okay? So, I, I didn't know who, who wrote this, but then I, I made some, some adjustment. And this is a, a conversation between two people, okay? And it's going to be me and, and Nicole. Uh, we didn't do practice, right? I mean, we, we did one, so we were trying uh, uh, to do our, our best, okay? So, Nicole, are you ready? Okay. Uh, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Isaiah 9, verse 2. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Isaiah 53, verse 3. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. What, what are you doing? Um, reading. But, but we are supposed to be reading the Christmas story. I am reading a prophecy about Jesus coming. Isn't that what you wanted? <laughs> no, I don't want that. You are reading about Easter Jesus. We are supposed to be reading about Christmas Jesus. Christmas Jesus? Yeah, you know, the baby in the manger and the whole thing. It's Christmas time. People are worried about finishing their shopping and how they are going to pay off their credit card in January. They don't want to hear sad stuff. But this stuff isn't sad. Oh, <laughs> Really? He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. That's not sad at all. It isn't pleasant, but it is part of the Christmas story. No, no, no. The Christmas story is about the manger and the taxes and the whole. There was no room for them in the hotel park. But that is only part of the story. I know, but it's, it's the holiday. No, no one to, wants to be challenged much. Maybe Jesus is safe. He doesn't ask much for people. He looks good on Christmas card. Wait, are you telling me that God becoming flesh and walking with sinful man is safe? It's radical, wonderful, and wild. It is far from safe. Yeah, but most people forget the whole God in flesh part. They just like the stable and the donkey and the stuff. I think you're selling people short. I think people should understand what was going on in Bethlehem that night. I think you are not correct. There's a lot of people here who wants to listen and they just want a little hope. So we are going to read them the story that make them smile, feel good, and get on with all the stuff that they have to do. But where is the hope without the cross? What? Our hope isn't that Jesus came. It was amazing and wonderful and beautiful that he came. But our hope comes from the cross and the empty tomb. But this is Christmas. Do we really need to talk about that now? If not now, then when? In our world, which is saturated with watered-down versions of Christmas, what we must do is to remember how wonderful a gift Jesus really is. What do you mean? He didn't come just to be a baby. He didn't come just to heal a few people and start a religion. Jesus came to die. He came to die for your sins and for mine and for the sins of all these people. And after he died, he rose again. And now, because of that, we can have eternal life. If that doesn't bring hope and peace this Christmas, then I don't know what.
about will. Okay, so, so what do you want to do? You read your part and I will read mine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. For unto us a child is born. But he was pierced for our transgression. Unto us a son is given. He was crushed for our iniquities. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And by his wound, we are healed. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He was crushed, he was pierced, and, and he, he rose, rose again. again. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. The, re the reason why, why I started my, my sermon with that kind of a conversation, uh, Christmas Jesus uh, versus uh, Easter Jesus, is based on my, my personal conversation with, with uh, several years ago with some people, and, and few of them are, are pastors, basically, and uh, we talk about, about the program in the church, and they believe that we should put more uh, emphasis or uh, priority more on Easter event in, uh, in opposed to Christmas event. Because they believe Christmas has become more more secular uh, celebration, okay? More people uh, celebrate Christmas whether or not they believe in Jesus, okay? Christmas just becoming uh, another holiday, okay? And then uh, Christmas itself is a celebration of a, a birth a, of child, okay? It's very naturally fit for a secular uh, celebration. And the subject matter is very ideal to be the child center celebration. Okay, so Christmas is associated with toys, uh, a present, gift, you know, candies, uh, uh, all of those stuff who make the children uh, uh, cheer up. But the, the, the true story, I mean, last week we also learned that Christmas is not just a story about baby who was uh, born in a manger. Okay, but it's more than that. I think we, we, we sang that song, the second song. That's the whole message of Christmas. So the same Jesus who was born in the manger is the same Jesus who went to the Calvary, died on the cross for our sin, and also the same Jesus who's going to come again as the king. Amen? That's the whole uh, a Christmas story. So today, uh, let's read about the birth of Jesus, okay, from the book of uh, from the gospel, basically. And there are two gospels that display the story about Jesus' birth, okay? One of them is Luke, and the other one is Matthew. And we are going to read uh, from both books. So let's read from Luke chapter 1, verse 26, 33. So Luke's gospel is showing the story from the perspective of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the book of Matthew is showing uh, from the perspective of Joseph, uh, which is the, the earthly father of Jesus Christ. So let's read uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 26, 33. Now, in the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendant of David, and the virgin name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favor one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and was pondering what kind of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom have no end. Let's open a Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. This is from the perspective of Joseph. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, since he was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had 
without this offer, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place so that we, what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet will be fulfilled. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. So there, 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 are, there are differences between uh, the story in Luke and, and Matthew, and then from the uh, messenger, okay, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary physically, okay, and the angel of the Lord, uh, it wasn't mentioned the name, I don't know whether Gabriel or some, uh, another angel, it appeared to Joseph in a dream, okay, so that's the difference. But when I study about this, there's something that is the same and it's true. Both of them, Joseph and Mary, they, they were chosen by God without any condition. They didn't do anything to earn that title, the, the parents, the earthly parents of Jesus Christ. Okay, I know that they were both from the line of Judah because the prophecy saying that Jesus is coming from the line of Judah. But it is a simply God's favor, God's grace, and God's divine choice. They didn't do anything else. They didn't do anything to earn that privilege to be the earthly uh, parents of Jesus Christ. Okay? I would like to uh, read uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 7, 14. This is the prophecy that the book of Matthew refers to. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us, or God is with us. It's very interesting because I don't think that I have ever prayed and called Jesus Emmanuel. I don't know, how about you? You know, like usually when I pray, uh, dear Jesus, I never said, dear Emmanuel. But here, Emmanuel is a name that was given to Jesus. If you look at Emmanuel with a letter I, uh, start with a letter I, that's from the, the Hebrew. Uh, Emmanuel means with us and El God. Okay? If you see, start with an E, letter E, that's a Greek. Okay? Emmanuel. Okay? So the word Emmanuel uh, only, only happens in, or occurs in, in, in Scripture three times, basically. One in Matthew that we just read, and also uh, two times in um, uh, the book of Isaiah. So the meaning is God with us, or God is with us. Very rare word in the Scripture, but appear in the most crucial point in the Scripture. So when we look at back from the beginning in the Genesis, God is always Emmanuel. God is always wants to be with his creation. I think this is my personal interpretation. The reason why uh, Adam and Eve were put in the garden, the same garden that God always walks, probably every day. Yeah, I don't know. So I think that's because God wants to have a fellowship with his creation, with them. Okay, he always wants to be with them. He always wants to have a fellowship and relationship with them. Then when Adam and Eve fell into sin, that blessing of Emmanuel was forfeited. But praise God, our Bible did not end in Genesis 3. God has prepared, God has worked it out, His divine salvation plan. And then if you learn in the Old Testament from Noah with the ark and the flood, even during that judgment, God is with him, with his family. It was quoted that God remembered Noah and family in the ark. Abraham, he was called the friend of God. Friends means what? There's a relationship. There's a fellowship. So 
God's presence is always with uh, Abraham. Okay, when we are talking about Moses and the Israelite during the Exodus, there's a lot of miracles. And that's the symbol of the presence of God, that God is always wants to be with His creation. How about um, uh, all these prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah? They, they, God spoke to them directly. So His presence is always with His creation. So now, when we hear that phrase, Emmanuel, God is with us. What does that mean to you and me? From a global perspective, it means that God is work within his creation. God did not create a universe or, or this earth and then just leave it to itself. You know, I created once, okay, so whatever happened just happened, okay? Um, I don't want to deal anymore, but God created the universe and worked it out, and God is still in control. God has prepared everything in advance for us. It means that nothing that happens is apart from God's ultimate purpose. So that's from the global perspective. And from the personal perspective, for me, right, for me, it's even better. Not only God is with me, but God is in us, in me. Jesus is in me. So it's like an a illustration uh, when you are in a car. Okay? You say that, yeah, God is with me in a car. But the question is, where did you put God? Where does God sit? Is it on the driver's seat? Is it on the passenger seat? Is it on the back seat? Or sometimes we just put God in the trunk. Just like a spare tire, right? Uh, we don't really need spare tire, but just in case we need it. Well, yeah, God is with me, but I just put it somewhere just in case I need him. Or whether you are, you are at home, so yeah, God is with me at home. But where is he? Oh yeah, I'm in the living room and God is in, in the other room, in the bedroom. But... From the global perspective, God is always wants with us. Close relationship. And from the personal perspective, for me, Emmanuel is even better. God is with us. God is with me, meaning that Jesus is in me. God is in me. God is, God is with us by way of his promise made to us. God has promised his children that he will work all things together for our good. He has promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. God has promised that nothing will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ. He has promised to resurrect us from the dead and grant us eternal life and joy in his presence. As we celebrate Christmas, I would like to invite all of you to, to receive this blessing of Emmanuel. That God is not only present when we need him or when he wants to talk with us, okay, God is always in us. Uh, I would like to read uh, uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 9, verse 6. We have been singing this song, and usually this verse comes out only when during uh, Christmas time. Isaiah 9. Verse 6, for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Consoler, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. So for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. It's very interesting that a child was born and the son will be given. It's not like a, a child was, was born and the child will be given, but a child was born, a son will be given. A child reflects his human nature. A son reflects his divine nature. A son never been born because he came from the eternity. 
John chapter 1, verse 1 to 2 say that in the beginning was word, the word was with God, the word was God. He is in the beginning with God. And then verse 14 say that the word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we saw his glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full grace and truth. So Jesus was in the beginning, Jesus was God, and Jesus was in the beginning with God. So that blessing of Emmanuel, when you think about it, that, oh, God, Emmanuel, God with us, was given to Jesus. He was born as a child, as a human uh, uh, nature, but as a son, he was from the eternity, he was God, is given to us, okay, and he lived in us. And that's, I don't know, I cannot think a better gift than that. How wonderful this blessing of Emmanuel in our life. And when, when, we, when we talk about the name of Jesus in Isaiah uh, uh, 9, 6, that he also will be called as a wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. Wonderful came from the word Hebrew pala. It means miraculously or phenomenon. And counselor because uh, in the history, the counselor reflects to a king who gave a counsel to his people, just like the king of Solomon. So he's the source of wisdom. He's the miraculous wisdom. Okay, and this verse is not only for Christmas, actually. This, Christ, this verse is for the second coming of Jesus Christ, when Jesus came or come uh, again as a king. And so when we sing the song during this Christmas, remember, it's not only for Christmas. It's, only for, it's also for future, Christmas and beyond, because he will come again as a wonderful counselor, a mighty God. Okay? He has a divine power, the coming king, an eternal father. Uh, it doesn't say that Jesus is the father, no, but the father of eternity. When he comes again as king, he doesn't have or he doesn't need a successor. He, we don't need another king because when he comes as a king, he will reign forever and ever. So that's it, okay, to the end. Prince of Peace, his government brings divine peace to the earth. Not now, when he comes again. So, as we celebrate Christmas, Jesus came to the world for all mankind. So my question is, is Christmas for everybody? I mean, culturally, we see that, yeah, uh, People celebrate Christmas, more and more people uh, put the Christmas tree up, put the Christmas light up, whether or not they believe that Jesus uh, is Lord, or not, right? But they celebrate Christmas. So if Jesus came to the world for all mankind, I would like to invite you to make this Christmas as a personal, and I pray that we are moved by the personal and divine power of the true gospel, that he came to the world, not only just for a, being a baby, but to give his life, to die on the cross, to redeem his creation. Now, the question again, if Jesus came to the world for all mankind, does it mean that Jesus died for everybody? Oh, I believe so. But it doesn't mean that everybody will be safe. Uh, probably not. I'm not a, a universalist, you know, that believe everybody uh, will be safe. But I don't know how that works. I believe something. That Jesus died. Jesus didn't die for nobody. He died for somebody. And that somebody is you. He didn't die for nobody. He died for somebody. And that person is you.
this Christmas is a good reminder for us that there's a story much more than just a baby in the manger. There's a message of salvation to all. And we just, we just need to respond it. Just like Mary, when uh, she was told about, hey, you know what? You're going to conceive a baby. She was perplexed. She, she was confused how, how that going to happen. But at the end, she said something that is so powerful that, behold, I'm the servant of you, Lord. Be unto me according to your will. Even Joseph, he had a dream. When you read in Matthew, he woke up and he just did whatever that the angel of the Lord commanded him. Obedience. Jesus said that uh, we are the light of the world. Okay? A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. In, it's a, in a Matthew 5. And in Isaiah chapter 2, there's a prophecy to say that, come, house of Jacob, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. So Jesus is the source of the light. Jesus is the source of our, our life. So when we are called to be the light of the world, the source is from Jesus. And remember, that's Emmanuel. He is with us. He is in you and me. Jesus said in, in, in the, the book of John, said that he will uh, pray and will ask the Father to send the helper, another helper, which is the Holy Spirit, to guide us, to live in us, okay? Because God is seeking the true worshiper who will worship him in spirit and truth. Because God is seeking the true worshiper who will worship him in spirit and truth, he sent another helper, the Holy Spirit, in us so that we become the true worshiper. So the blessing of Emmanuel, Jesus is in us. Holy Spirit is in us. And that's for us. The blessing of Emmanuel is for us. I would like to uh, close with uh, uh, two verses. Okay. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I no live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I think that uh, uh, the, the worship leaders say that it is uh, God's initiation. God initiated the love, not from our side, but God's side. God knows all our weaknesses. God knows all our wickedness. God knows all our uh, rebellions. But he still loves us. He came, he died for us, and he loves us. And the question is, what kind of love is that? I mean, I believe that's the agape, right? The love of God. That's the intimate knowledge accompanied by infinite love. He knows from the beginning to the end. And he just poured out the love to his creation. So this is our hope. This is our hope. Emmanuel, God is with us. God is in us. In our affliction, we are not alone. In our suffering, we are not alone. Our hope is not on the uh, temporal things in this world, but it's on the eternal things when Jesus is coming again as a wonderful counselor, mighty God, eternal father, prince, prince of peace blessing of Emmanuel. I want to close with this verse, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, 
not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So Zerubbabel is the king, and uh, he was trying to uh, reconstruct the temple of God. Remember, the temple of God in the Old Testament is the symbol of the presence of God. And God asked Zerubbabel to reconstruct the temple of God because, again, he wants to be with his creation. He wants to have a fellowship with his creation. And Zerubbabel was so uh, overwhelmed and then uh, a lot of pressure. Can I finish this or not? But God says that, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Even on that kind of assignment, God initiated the heart. God said that, don't do it by your own power, but by my power. So, the message of Christmas, you might be assigned to be a father, you might be assigned to be a mother, you might be assigned to be a, a leader, to be a, a, a worker, employee, or employer, a business owner. Wherever is your assignment is, remember that Zechariah. Not by mind, not, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Put our hope in Him. Put our hope and our trust in His power. In his spirit and his spirit is Emmanuel is in us let's pray Heavenly Father we, we thank you so much Lord that even during this pandemic during this difficult time we, we can gather together and we can celebrate a Christmas We can celebrate the event that has been impactful and powerful to all mankind. The story of your birth, Jesus. And this is just a part of story, part of the a divine plan that you have prepared in advance for us. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to the world thank you for going to the Calvary thank you for dying in the cross for our sins and thank you that you promised that you are going to come again as a king as our wonderful counselor as our mighty God our eternal father and our prince of peace we thank you Lord Jesus we remember, Father, what you said to uh, 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 Zechariah. Is it not by our mind, not by our power, but by your Spirit, of oh Lord, that we put our hope in terms of our affliction, in terms of our suffering, in terms of our difficult time, Father? Yes, we don't know, Lord Jesus, anything in the future know for sure that you came with a purpose to redeem your creation to save us and just for your glory thank you Lord Jesus I just want to pray Father for for uh, uh, our family in this IFGF uh, Seattle Lord Jesus we thank you that you have been so faithful that you have been so kind and good Father to our church and family of God here, that you continue to bless us, Father, and you continue to lead us, that you continue to remind us that the message of salvation is for us, and you are the one who initiated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We celebrate Christmas. We want to uh, take this Christmas to be our personal message, Father, that we are blessed receive the blessing of Emmanuel. God is with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Happy Sunday, everyone. God bless you.